My name is Bill Mikowski. I'm from Milford, Maine. Uh, what I actually do for a living is I'm a snowshoe maker and a pack basket maker. And uh, I've been a trapper since I was around seven years old. This is my 58th year trapping. Um, been very fortunate my entire life to have had a lot of different careers. I'm actually a wildlife biologist by training, but I've been a commercial fisherman and a farmer and a greenhouse operator and a bush pilot. But I've had one thread that ran through my entire life, and that's trapping. Being a wildlife biologist, that kind of gives the connotation of my interest in the outdoors. Uh, and, and trapping is, a, is really kind of a unique hobby or profession because you develop a relationship with your uh, with the fur bearers that you're uh, trying to harvest, unlike any other hunting or fishing or naturalist's observations, but there's nothing like that relationship that you develop with a trapper. Over the last 20 years, I think changes in trapping techniques have improved immeasurably, but it also has provided trappers with not only a much more humane uh, trapping techniques, but also with uh, techniques that cause less damage to the fur. It's more humane, there's less struggle from the animal, and, and this has been revolutionized now. All traps that come in now that are new, that are introduced, have to be certified, and certified for particular animals. Uh, and that's uh, pretty strictly enforced. As far as the foot restraining devices go, um, those are utilized through the, uh, the wildlife community for all kinds of uh, capture and relocation programs, over the years, these have really, the technology in those has, has advanced tremendously from years ago. They're now all designed so that they have a gap in the jaws so that there's absolutely no foot breakage. They have a wide jaw so that there's no slippage of the foot back and forth that cuts the foot at all. There are even traps now that are designed with rubber padded jaws. Uh, I think the trauma that's involved with the animal is the restraint part of it. There certainly is no pain involved with uh, the closure of the trap on the foot. Uh, they've demonstrated this repeatedly in research projects where they've trapped everything from lynx to coyotes to wolves or radio telemetry projects and so on. That there's very, very, very little foot damage. It's almost non-existent anymore. For many species and for as many <clears throat> as possible, we utilize quick killing body gripping traps or traps that have a strike area directly behind the neck. For some larger species, it uh, requires live trapping, particularly in a, what we call an animal damage control situation where it may be in a neighborhood or, or where there's children around or dogs. In that case, we use live traps. I think there's a lot of people that, you know, their first reaction is that trapping has been responsible for the, ex, uh, for the extirpation of a lot of animals. And that, that really in nowadays is not true. Uh, we have such sophisticated monitoring mechanisms in place and each jurisdiction, whether it be provincial or state, uh, really keeps a pretty good handle on fur resources along with most other species. So, you know, there are regulations and there are processes in place that can address that if there's over harvests or you know, really nowadays, believe it or not, the problem is under harvest with most species. When you look at the population as a whole, and, and particularly I'm fortunate with my training, the background as a wildlife biologist, you don't look at that individual coyote in particular, you look at the population and the ramifications of overpopulation, the disease, the starvation, you know, the fluctuation in populations by natural causes. And particularly the number one issue now is habitat encroachment, you know, loss of habitat. This is, a, this is a renewable resource. If we maintain the basis for that resource, we're going to have this forever. But you can't stockpile it, and you can't, and you, and you can't selectively pick out one particular individual and focus that energy on it. It has to be a broader view.